Hello YouTube. I wanted to do a little educational video about 8-tracks. From what I understand, some people get confused when it comes to 8-tracks and cassettes. And a lot of people ask, well why do they call it an 8-track? Well, an 8-track actually has 4 tracks in stereo, so that's how they get 8 from that. And it's a continuous loop. The tape doesn't rewind. Some machines and players have a fast forward feature, but I wouldn't recommend using that because sometimes it can get all messy and everything jump off track. The, the splices in between the tracks, there's actually a piece of foil on the tape. If I can pull one out here to show you. I've got a mess. Okay, now what you see here is a foil splice, if I can focus in on it. And the reason the, the splice is made out of foil, when I take the 8-track player apart, I'll show you there's a sensor. And when it rolls across that sensor, it causes the head to actually lower down to where it picks up and reads the next track on the magnetic tape. It's a very interesting feature. And because of this sensor, it actually powers up the cassette adapters. I found this out the hard way. I'll go into more explanation on that in a little while. Most of the time when you buy a used 8-track cassette, this is a problem. Now this is called a pressure pad and it actually helps keep tension on the tape when the head is pressed against it to play. This foam is always worn out and sometimes the trash gets caught up inside the cartridge. I found that the cartridges that have these metal pieces in, in place of the pressure pads actually work a lot better but sometimes the felt gets worn off of these and also that could get tangled up in the tape and cause it to come unwound. Another thing to inspect when you buy used 8-track cartridges, the rollers. If these rollers don't move freely then they need to be replaced also. You can take the 8-tracks apart and sometimes you can put them back together without any problems but uh, there's been a couple of them that I've taken apart and I've found that the prongs and everything that holds it together I usually end up breaking as I pry them apart. I don't know, maybe you could possibly glue them back together after replacing the pads or maybe even the full splices. But uh, sometimes it's uh, you're, you're better off just to throw the tape away and see if you can find another one. I know that some of them are extremely rare and getting harder to find all the time, but uh, I've found that, you know, if I buy a bin full of tapes for $20, a lot of them play, but some of them I just throw away. If they don't work, I toss them out. Now, what I have here is two different cassette adapters. I bought, I bought both of these used on eBay, and as you can see, this, this one is gigantic compared to the other and uh, they both work great it's not a problem at all this one's kind of neat because it's enclosed it looks just like a, a miniature cassette player but adapted to an 8-track on this side and if, if you could imagine <laughs> you've got this much of it hanging out in your car in the dash so that's that's kind of cumbersome in a way but uh, it, still, it, I, I thought it was really neat and it works really well. One thing that I discovered is even though the 8-track player that I had in the dash of my car at the time didn't play 8-tracks, the cassette adapters would work. And I'll explain the reason why. If you remember earlier, I was telling you about the full splices that runs across the sensor and this triggers the head to move up and down to different tracks. Well the sensor that's inside the tape player 
there's a there's a prong and I don't know if these will show up very well on the camera but this is also what powers the cassette adapter I thought for some reason the mechanics that move the tape inside of the tape player also move the cassette adapter but that's not the case at all it simply powers a whole different drive system from these little prongs the spring-loaded prongs that go up against the sensor that triggers from the full splices I thought to myself wouldn't it be neat if I could plug my iPod into an 8-track player and it I bought an adapter that you can see here for an mp3 player or an iPod but it wouldn't work with this one because it's totally enclosed and you have a cord here that's attached that plugs into your headphone jack so this was the better option this one is a Craco cassette adapter it has an open face and also this plugs in to your 8-track player and allows you to adapt to an mp3 player or iPod or your phone I thought that would be a pretty neat feature adapt to an adapter to play in an 8-track if you buy a used 8-track 9 times out of 10 the belt is bad see if I can get this off. Okay, this isn't exactly the same model that I have in the dash of my car, but it's similar to it. And you'll always find that these covers can come off fairly easy. There was three screws in this one. I had one here, one here, and also one in the very back. And after removing the three screws, the top cover come off that, without a problem. Everything looks really complex and and packed in tightly and I, I'm, I'm nowhere near an expert on 8-track players or uh, you know what all the electronics and wiring does but uh, I do know that here's your motor and this is the cap span cap span I think I'm pronouncing that right and nine times out of ten if you buy one of these used the belt may be stretched out or out of position and it's it's really not that complicated but if you need to buy a new belt or maybe the old one's broken be sure to look up the model number this is very difficult to put it on track one handed there we go as you can see everything spins and moves now I haven't tested this one this this particular model was given to me and it's an aftermarket uh, Cobra it's not a not a factory 8-track player um, I did power it up and I, I put an 8-track in just to make sure and the motor and everything comes on everything spins everything lights up and I can change the tracks but I didn't hook any speakers up to it to see if it was actually playing uh, everything powers up just fine so I, I assume that this one probably works as well um, I, I kinda wanna keep this one as a backup I don't think it would fit my dash because the knobs aren't adjustable and uh, the one that I have in my car is a Sears dash mate and the spacing of the knobs you can adjust further out or in depending on how your dash is made so you don't have to cut up your dash or modify it in some way to put the 8-track player in so I'm really interested in dead formats of music I, I like vinyl records I like cassettes and I also like 8-tracks I have some fond memories of my dad playing the Beach Boys on 8-track tapes. 